Today I will continue to teach on the importance of prayer and the power of prayer. Many Christians don't understand how important prayer really is. We do not receive answers to prayer because we don't pray the way the Bible teaches us to pray. And how does the Bible teach us to pray? We should pray without ceasing. When you study the book of Daniel, we can see that prayer meant everything to him. Daniel would pray even if he was threatened that they would throw him into the lion's den. Yes, this is the reason why Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. He would not cease to pray to his God. And whatever, whenever Daniel wanted to know something, he would pray without ceasing. He prayed for 21 days till finally the angel of the Lord came through and showed him what must happen in the future to the people of Israel. And one day Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and he forgot the dream. So he said to his wise men, you better tell me what my dream is and then interpret my dream or else you're all going to die. This is quite an order for he had forgotten what his dream was. And Daniel asked for time to pray and ask his God that his God would reveal the dream to him. And Daniel received an answer from God. And when he told the dream to Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar told him that Daniel was a very wise man. And it tells us here that Daniel told King Nebuchadnezzar, but as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have any more than any living. He was telling the king, it's not that I had more wisdom than anybody else, but because I sought the face of my God. This is why the dream was shown to me. And this is exactly how it works today. For you to get an answer to prayer, you have to seek the face of God. The Bible calls it praying without ceasing. Today I want to teach more on this subject, but before I get into this message, I will ask the Lord to bless us. Heavenly Father, I come before you in Jesus' name, and I thank you, God, for the power of prayer. I pray that you will bless the listeners, those who are within the sound of my voice today. I pray that you will wake us up, Lord, for your soon coming is on the horizon, and we need to get ready. We need to pray, O oh Father, that we will not fall into confusion. I ask you to bless this message today. In Jesus' name, amen. When one studies the New Testament, we can quickly see how important prayer is. Our Lord Jesus Christ, our greatest example, would draw, draw aside from the crowd and from his apostle to talk to his heavenly father. He would spend all night in prayer by himself. And at the hour of his crucifixion, when he was in the Garden of Eden, he prayed earnestly and he called upon his disciples to pray that they would not fall into temptation. It tells us in Luke chapter 22, verse 44, that he being in agony, he prayed more earnestly and his sweat was it were great drops of blood falling to down to the ground. So he prayed earnestly because he knew the importance of his work that he was supposed to perform. And what was that work? He was supposed to take care of the sin problem of this world. And he would ne not dare do that before he would pray earnestly. 
When one studies the book of Acts, we can see how important prayer was to the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. They would do nothing without praying. In Acts chapter 6 verse 4, they tell the, the, the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, they tell the believers, we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to ministry of the word. Yes, dear friends, the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ knew that if they, have, if they were to prevail in the ministry of the word, they had to pray first. When one studies the Apostle Paul, we can see that he had no political uh, clout. He was sought by the government for execution, and his fellow Jews tried to kill him whenever they could. We can see that the Apostle Paul totally relied on the power of prayer. In, Paul, in Romans chapter 1 verse 8, he tells the church that he constantly prays for the believers of God that they would be able to spread the word of God through all the nations. And we can read in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 9 to 11, the Apostle Paul is thanking the church for their prayers that they are such a help to him. He asked the church to pray for him so that he would receive boldness. We can readily see the, the, the Apostle Paul who could not be detoured from anything, but he asked them to pray for him that he would be bold in preaching this awesome gospel. When we study First Timothy, Chapter 4, it tells us that we should pray to sanctify the food that we eat. Yes, the Lord Jesus created everything on this earth. He said everything is good for food and that we should sanctify it through the power of prayer. James chapter 5 verse 15 tells us that we should pray for the sick. We should lay hands on the sick, anoint them with oil, and they will recover. Today, not too many people pray for the sick anymore. They have even come to the conclusion that people do not get healed anymore, that that has gone out with the apostle. For to get healed now, you have to go to a doctor. Yes, when somebody tells you that he is sick, that something is wrong with him, what do we do first? We advise him to go see the doctor. Smith Wigglesworth in the 1800s, he complained that people were starting to rely more on the aspirin than on the power of God to heal them. What would Smith Wigglesworth say today? It is amazing how little dependence we have on God when riches are increased. Yes, today, instead of praying for the sick, the first thing we do is, have you seen the doctor? Yes, we should come back to our roots where we lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And I believe many Christians are now daring to go in that direction and they are seeing results. The, uh, the Apostle James tells us that the fervent prayer the fervent, effectual prayer of a righteous man availeth much. What is he telling us here? He's telling us that the unceasing prayer of a righteous man availeth much. This is why prayers are not being answered today. Because people pray it, it seems like with some, they just pray a nursery rhyme that they have been taught when they were little children. And, and the power of prayer is not really there. It's something that they have been taught by their religion and that's what they do throughout their life. Prayer is much different. It is a communication with God. 
And the, most of the reasons prayer do not get answered is because the children of God do not take the advice of the Apostle James. And what is that advice? It tells us to pray without ceasing. Why does not a man pray without ceasing? Because he does not have a relationship with his God. For I know for a fact, if you have a relationship with God, you pray to him regardless of regardless of what happens, even if you're not sick, even if there's nothing wrong, I know for myself, I find myself communicating with my God throughout the day. I do not need to wait till I get on my knees before I go to bed. I pray constantly, and I believe a person who is filled with the Holy Spirit, a person who loves the Lord Jesus Christ, will, will pray throughout the day or whenever he is awake because this is his second nature. The power of the Holy Spirit is within him and he cannot help but to pray. This is why James says, the fervent, unceasing prayer of a righteous man availeth much. This is the key. The reason you don't pray unceasingly is because you do not have a relationship with the God that saved you. So I'm asking you today, where do you stand on this subject? I have given you quite a few examples here. The, uh, the, the great prophet Daniel would not do nothing without praying. The Lord Jesus Christ prayed earnestly in every situation. The Apostle Paul wouldn't dare go out on the streets without first consulting his Heavenly Father. We know that James tells us that we need to pray for our sick, who, for the sick who are amongst us, so that they'll get healed. Is that what we're doing? Or have we forgotten the importance of prayer? Is it so, has it somehow come to a point where we feel we don't need that anymore? Well, I want to encourage you today. Get praying, for we know the time is at hand. Jesus is about to come back. And if you will start to pray today, the Lord will begin to answer you. It is like everything else. Sometimes it takes time for you to receive an answer from God. Sometimes the prayers get answered very quickly. But the most important thing is we need to seek the face of God. And for those of you who don't know the Lord Jesus Christ today, regardless what situation you're in, you first need to get saved before your prayers will be answered. I know many people pray who don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. And I am not to say that God does not answer your prayer because I believe he even answers the prayer of the unbeliever. But to really get your prayers answered, get to know your God. Turn to the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation and then start a prayer life. For the Bible teaches that God is as close to you as your heart and your mouth. Yes, dear friends, when we look at the world scene today, we can see that we need to pray now more than ever. The confusion that is invading this country is beyond our imagination. You talk to the average person about what's going on in this world, many don't have a clue, and a lot of people who think they know don't even know what they're talking about. They need 
their eyes to be opened by the word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. And the only way that will happen is if the children of God would intercede and pray for those who are lost and don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, dear friends, get together to pray with your loved ones or with fellow believers. Put aside a time for prayer in those last hours, for the confusion is incredible. Jesus is about to come back, and as that day draws closer, we will find out that Satan will do some terrible things. He will bring confusion to people that are running this country, and we need to stand in the gap for them. Yes, our Lord Jesus Christ has called us to this awesome job, to pray for this world, so that this world will see the light. Yes, the Lord Jesus Christ said, I do not pray for the world, but I pray for those disciples. You know why he said that? It is because it is our job to pray for the world. The Lord has given Adam and Eve this world to subdue. He is not doing it. He, is, he has given us the job to do it. And if he tells us to subdue this world, we need to pray for this world so that God will have his say so. Yes, dear friends, this is the commission that God has given to his children. So let's be found faithful, for he is soon coming back to reward them that are his. The Lord will bless you and make you a blessing. Amen. Today I want to share a bit of a testimony on how the Lord has answered prayer in my life. When I look back, I'm amazed at the faithfulness of God. For you see, when you start out as a Christian, you believe in your head that God is faithful. But after experiencing 25 years of mercy, grace, and joy, you can understand the true meaning of the grace of God. I became a Christian when I was 27 years old, and I lived in a very religious system. I grew up religious, and I did not know the Lord Jesus Christ because the message of salvation was never really preached in the religious system where I grew up in. At that time, there was hardly any mention of anybody becoming Christian. Even though in the, these days today, it has changed dramatically. Quite a revival has broken about out amongst my people. And I'm thankful to God for that answered prayer. Well, I started out believing that God can change anything. Through reading the Word of God and through listening uh, my, to my favorite Bible teachers on the radio, I got this idea, if I could only get on the radio to preach this awesome message, many religious people would get to know the Lord and get saved. For you see, in my heart I knew religious people would like to serve God, but they are being deceived in thinking that good works it amounts to Christianity, and that is not true. The only person that will stand righteous in God's eyes are the ones that have been saved by the power of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I used to wonder, what, what God grant me that wish? And I would pray, Lord, give me the chance to go and preach this gospel on the radio. For you see, the religious system I come from wasn't even allowed to have a radio. Never mind preach the gospel on the radio. It did not take too long. After a while, we became quite a, a, a small group of 
believers. And we were excommunicated for our bold stand for the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord Jesus Christ was very faithful. For you see the religious system where we come from. They have everything in common. And they made us leave with nothing except the few personal belongings that we had. And I tell you this, it is quite a feat to go into a different culture. And God was faithful. He provided for our finances, even though we had nothing when we left. He provided good jobs for us. And most of all, He gave us wisdom to use the money that we were able to get through working. He, we were able to use that money for the glory of God. That is to raise our family and to finance the gospel. So we were able to be a blessing. And the Lord, after a while, answered the most incredible prayer that I prayed. I was allowed to go on the airwaves in the year 2000. At the end of the year 2000, for the first time, the Lord opened doors so that I was able to preach this awesome gospel to the religious people that I had left behind. And I have to say this, I saw many turn to Jesus over the course of the last 15 years. And in the last five years, there has been an explosion. The Lord is really moving in answering those prayers. And we have a fellowship of believers who are dedicated to get together once a week to pray for the lost and to pray for this world situation. I am challenging you today. God surely answered prayer for me and he wants to do the same for you so many times i've heard people say if only i could win the lottery you don't need the lottery if you got jesus christ all you need to do is step out in faith and believe him for the impossible and the lord god will open doors for you that you thought were impossible to be opened. Yes, God has answered many prayers. There have been times of great disappointment and even times of personal tragedy. But God saw us through it all. The Lord has blessed our life immensely. And I'm looking forward to His return now more than ever. The Lord will touch your heart and challenge you and make you a blessing. Amen.